Hi Bother Brigade, here's what's bothering me today. We're finally here, at the end of the year, and unfortunately I didn't get everything done wanted that I wanted to get done, both for real life things and also stuff that I want to do online here for this community and some other stuff. But, you know, instead of wallowing in that, oh geez, you know, I didn't hold on to that, and a lot of people, right, a lot of people right now, are really struggling and not looking forward to the next year because of all the deluge of bad news recently and just, you know, the bad news over the course of this year. Don't worry, we're not doing a recap of that. Lord knows that would just be terrible and would be hours which no one would want to watch. But what I want to focus on today is to remind people of a lot of the positive things that happened just this year. Because I think it's important to try and carry that forward as much as the situation sucks and, you know, make no bones about it, right? It does suck. But again, let's look at a lot of the positive things that have happened to remind us that there's more good in the world than just cute animal videos on the internet. So for starters, back in August, right, Cuomo resigned. After immense public pressure, Cuomo resigned. We also had the revelation that uh, Prince Andrew was being sued, and that still continues to be a developing story. This is good, positive news of people in power beginning to be held accountable. The other thing from August was here in Canada that Brian Pallister, the then Premier of Manitoba, basically stepped down because he saw the writing on the wall that he would be destroyed in the next election by the NDP. And that's just August, folks. Back in September, right, we had a whole bunch of other stories that were going on. You had the fact that Quebec, back in September, was looking at banning all fossil fuel extraction in the province, and that basically came right on the heels of the news that Canada's second largest pension fund was pulling out of investing in the oil and gas industry entirely. Again, significant positive developments. There was also the fact that uh, with relation to that whole oil and gas thing, the injunction at Ferry Creek, which is one of the things I never got around to talking about this year, that was ended by a judge because the cops were being too terrible and brutal to protesters. That is some excellent news. And on top of that, around that same time, the federal government was ordered to pay billions in restitution to indigenous kids. And, uh, you know, yeah, of course, they're still fighting that. But basically, it's gotten to the point where um, they kind of have to pay up. Again, positive developments. And then just a month later, in October, there was the massive general strike in South Korea, which, of course, the media didn't report on. But it was a massive thing over in Korea. And power to them. I'm still not sure how successful the following actions have been, but that was a massive, I think, two-day strike that they managed to organize. Power to them. Which also reminds us that the Indian farmers who have been striking since, like, I think at least 2020, they won. The striking workers in India who set up, it, you can't even really call it a tent city, but they set up a massive encampment in New Delhi and basically held firm until Modi and his government were forced to cave on some very crucial things that they were really fighting and in many cases dying for. Again, positive great developments from this past year. And then on top of that, right, you have most recently, um, you have, uh, let's see, Trump running scared because uh, the January 6th commission, they're saying, hey, can we get the White House papers? Like, no, it's just like private stuff. So that's kind of funny. The other thing that's funny about Trump was uh, how his sudden pro-vaccine stance started tearing apart parts of the right, which you always love to see. Uh, speaking of the right wing, the Fox News Christmas tree caught on fire and they were really salty about that. So you always love to see that. And then there was also the fact that Kim Potter, the lady who murdered Dante Wright, was found guilty of manslaughter. You also had, again, the killers of Ahmaud Arbery found guilty. Sure, it wasn't actually justice being served, as we pointed out in that video, but again, positive development. And additionally, more recently, you have 
Uh, gamer is starting to push back against NFTs and gaming, which I mean, thank God that that's happening. And also, in positive news, trans and queer people got to be happy for fucking once because of Matrix Resurrections. These are, again, objectively good things. And also, more recently, we have uh, that Bernie tweet that made big pharma stock tank, which, I mean, that just really shows that the stock market is stupid, right? But there was also the fact that Kashama Sawant, who's basically the only socialist uh, actually part of city council in Seattle, she won her corporate-backed recall. Also, crucially, Starbucks unionized, well, one location in the States and I think another location in Canada, then a second location in Canada. But either way, again, labor gains, which again brings us to the fact that striking Kellogg workers won. And for those who didn't know, it's also recent news here, striking Cargill workers, Cargill, the big like massive meatpacking plant uh, out in Alberta and like High River, Alberta or something like that. They won a better new contract. These are all just fantastic stories that happen, including finally in terms of corporate getting what's coming to them, Amazon in Europe was sued $1.28 billion for basically abusing the free market to a certain extent, because there's a whole thing on that with like Italian market protections and stuff. Either way, right? These are just what? 20 plus really good news stories from throughout the year. In fact, most of these are really just in the second half of the year. These are positive things, very good developments that I want people to remember and hold on to into the year ahead. Because yeah, it's, it's no doubt going to be a rough year. We've seen our governments and big business basically just give up on trying to fight this pandemic, which puts lots of people, people we love and care about at risk. And the callous eugenics of it is objectively horrifying. But lots of people are saying, well, you know, what can you do? Come on, we need to get back to normal. And yeah, you know, it's, it's horrifying, right? It absolutely is horrifying. But at the same time, pause. Look back at all those stories, all those amazing victories, all that good, wonderful progress. And that hasn't even touched on all the various fundraising efforts that many of y'all participated in, helping raise money for indigenous residential school survivors, for uh, sheltering the homeless with tiny shelters with mutual aid Halifax. We have done so much over the course of one year year it's absolutely amazing thank you all for being here thank you for helping and for staying along for this very chaotic ride so with that here's to you to all of you who are here and also to all those who are not but for those who are here and who survived another shitty terrible unpredictable year Here's to the best of 2022, where we're going to again recap positive news developments at the end of that year. I hope you'll all be there at hopefully, you know, the end of the year next year. And I hope everyone's final end of the year for 2021 is safe, memorable, happy, and that you take all these like 20 plus stories to heart. You are all amazing. I love you all. You're all valid. Here's to the new year. But uh, the fact that it's not looking so great is definitely what's bothering me today. <laughs>